and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm Krista Burns, your host at the Nebraska Library Commission. This is our weekly online event where we cover uh, various NLC activities and library topics presented by um, our staff here and guest speakers that we bring in sometimes. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. They're free, one-hour sessions. Um, and they're made a mixture of things, presentations, interviews, book reviews, Q&A sessions, trainings, whatever we can think of that might be of interest to our Nebraska library world. Um, this morning, we have our uh, checking out the new Nebraska Access, which went live a couple weeks ago. I sure. forget exactly. And I love that. Um, new URL, new look for it, and we have um, Beth, Elena, and Lisa here who are going to take you on a tour through the new Nebraska Access. So I'm going to hand it over to them. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us to check out the new Nebraska Access. Um, you can see here on your first slide, we do have a new URL. Um, it's nebraskaaccess.ne.gov. Um, before we really get started, I'm just going to do a couple brief introductions here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana Novotny. I am the Network Services Librarian, and I have been working with Nebraska Access since it started day one, uh, more years ago than I would care to admit. So, <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and let Beth introduce herself. Hi everybody, I'm Beth Goebel and I'm the Government Information Services Director. So I'm one of the three voices you might hear if you ever uh, call into our reference desk. I work a lot with the Government Information and also uh, work a lot on some of the Nebraska access resources that you're going to be seeing today. I'm Lisa Kelly, I'm the Information Services Director and I'm also at the reference desk and I'm new to Nebraska Access. I came to this as a part of working on the web team with Alana. So, uh, but some of the resources that I've put together and Beth has put together have been combined into this resource. So we are all intimate with this new website and are eager for you to see it. I think we'll start out next. Um, I'm just going to really briefly show you Nebraska Access. I just wasn't sure if everybody's actually taken a look at it. Um, after I just kind of real quick show it to you, uh, then we're kind of going to divide it up amongst the three of us and we'll kind of take some time and actually show you different parts of it. So. Uh, uh, yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Krista's asking me a question. Um, I'm going to go ahead then, and you are going to lose our video, so. Now, um, let's see, I'm going to go out now and start showing. Did I make the window any bigger for this one? You should be able to just put back it, yeah, in the corner down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. We were trying to adjust what we're seeing on our screen here. We'll just work with it the way it is. That's fine. Well, Krista's going to try to help me just a second here. It's not changing. Thanks for your patience, everyone. <laughs> That's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. For any of the folks joining us today that haven't seen it, um, what you're seeing now is the new Nebraska Access page. I uh, just want to highlight a couple things. Uh, you will see we do have a navigation bar at the top of the screen. We'll talk about some of those links in just a few minutes. Um, then we've added these nice little faces, the different people here, and you may have noticed every time you come to the page, you'll get one of the random uh, people there, and next to each person's face, you'll see a question. And what we have is designed this to help people sort of get an idea of what kind of information they can find in Nebraska Access. And the nice thing is, if you see one of those questions and you want to know more, you can simply click on it, 
And then you'll be taken to a secondary page here that lists the question along with the answers. So it tells you how you can go about and find the answers to that particular question. Um, if you want, you also have the ability on the same page just to browse through um, all of the different questions that will rotate across the, on the front page. I just went ahead and went back to the main page again. Um, in just a little bit, Lisa's going to show you how you can go about and use these cate subject categories here to browse our site. Um, working our way down the page, a couple things, other things that I wanted to make sure I pointed out were um, these pictures of Nebraska libraries. Um, again, these are rotating pictures. So every time you come to the page, you're going to get different libraries showing up there. To the right of that, we have three links for popular pages. Um, these are just pages that are pop have been popular over the last month, uh, different pages and stuff on our Nebraska Access websites that people have been using um, quite frequently. I'm just kind of back up at the top. One more time here. Um, on the right-hand side navigation bar, you'll see links to the additional resources. Um, that's where you're going to go to get a list of all of the databases that we have purchased. So if we're talking in the old Nebraska Access world where you got just a list of the databases, that's where you want to go to get them. And then we have links to additional resources that include our state government publications, uh, a link back to the Library Commission site, and a link out to the Nebraska Memories Project. And then later on, Lisa's going to go ahead and talk to you about what the hot topics are. So that's just a kind of a real quick rundown of what the page looks like. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to go through it in a little more detail in just a few minutes. Um, a couple of other things that I want to make sure I mention. Uh, we have left the old site live. Uh, we do realize that there's a lot of uh, media specialists, librarians, teachers out there that are probably in the middle of, you know, school yet, trying to teach this to the, kid, the children, and, you know, have all their curriculum and everything put together. So we are leaving the old site up until the end of June. So feel free to keep using the old site if that's what you've already taught your students and stuff. Um, it's going to be there. Nothing's going to change on it, and we're not going to take it down to the end of June. So um, feel free to make the switch to using the new site whenever works best for you. I'm going to turn it over to Lisa now, and she's going to talk a little bit about some of the changes we've made. Great. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, Alana, subject so I can see. <laughs> we realized when we were doing um, web page remodeling, as everyone struggles to do probably at some point, that we weren't linking our live subjects together, and we didn't have all of our best resources available for Nebraskans in one place. So through the help of an intern who was working with us, she saw it quite clearly, where all of us who'd worked with it too closely couldn't see it. So this particular format, you'll see subject listings here, and it links like things together, just like the good old Dewey would or serendipity shelf browsing would. We've tried to put like subjects together. And when we combined that with our databases, we realized that it didn't matter. It doesn't matter to, to Nebraskans where they're looking. They just want to be able to browse by subject. So this was one way to marry the databases and websites that we've really worked hard to collect together in one place. We've um, sort of spruced up the subjects a little bit. They're not quite in the same wording or maybe perhaps the same order. Maybe that's just so that you'll have to look again and pay attention to what we've <laughs> relinked. So apologies to those of you who are used to going third link down or something. Um, and through just people using these words, we've decided to make some changes as well. My old Dewey Decimal days makes me think of things in a way that's really not as practical. So I realize my choice of words isn't everyone's choice of words. So um, that that is where it's come from. This is the old best of the web, which is what we call it here. So that, that's been married into this Nebraska Access website. So it should look kind of familiar to you, at least I'm hoping that it does. Um, so that's why they were combined. We hope it's really more relevant and helpful to our Nebraskans. I 
think we'll go ahead then and um, just start showing you some other parts of it. Uh, earlier, I did mention the additional resources page here. And if you want to, uh, I don't want to say avoid, but not look at the subject categories that Lisa just talked about, you can go directly to the additional resources page. Um, and here you're going to see just a list of these are all the databases that we have purchased for state um, access. None of these have changed. Everything is still the same or just to have the, how we link to them looks a little bit different. And you see we have kind of grouped them here by we've put in the magazine newspapers um, databases together. We've grouped the books databases together. And then we have the general reference. Um, I also want to point out that all of your passwords that you have still works. Um, none of that has changed. Uh, I do, I've had a couple phone calls. This, if you, a lot of you probably already know, the Nebraska Access passwords do change every April 1st and October 1st. And um, we always do try to get those sent out a month or so in advance. So that is definitely on my to-do list. I will be sending those out probably um, later this week, or if not, at the first part of next week. So um, you can start watching your emails for the new passwords that will be coming out soon. Now, in addition to having um, the links on the additional resources um, available page here, I also wanted to point out, we didn't go to a secondary page yet, but off the front page, if you start browsing any of these categories, you'll see that we have also listed the databases that are related to a particular subject above um, the list of websites. So uh, hopefully that will make it more apparent uh, to everybody that's using the site that they have a couple different options. They can, if there are from Nebraska, of course, access these additional resources we pay for, or they can go out and browse some of the great, great websites that are available for free. I think Lisa now is going to talk a little more about sure, um, sure. some of the browse options. Yeah, let's go home. Um, well, we know that people search differently, and so we're, we're taking a search, a browse approach to this particular website, we realize, with this kind of subject heading, and we tested it on our friends and family, and one of my frequent internet users said, I found what I wanted right away. This, this particular format really worked for her. So I just want to take through a couple of questions you might have, and we'll browse through to see where the information would be. So, for example, you have a student or you yourself are interested in a particular person. Um, within this subject heading, you might think biography, geolo genealogy, and people. And let's just click there. Well, what we've also tried to do with the databases is, is weight the databases. So we think that the most relevant and most appropriate databases that would be helpful to you are on top. So for those of you who think, what, why are they not alphabetical? It's because we really wanted to highlight and lift up those databases that we think would be most relevant. But for example, in this particular set of databases, Wilson Biographies, which is just a terrific full text research in the print format as a reference librarian that always been one of my favorites so if you've got an author that your students researching a sports star or you've got information you need to look for that is a really terrific place to go and i would always start there uh, you're going to get a full text article and you're going to get a lot of references to where that information's been cited it couldn't be a better resource so i really encourage you to use that down below, you can see alumni, presidents, there's popes, Larry King's interviews, there's going to be famous Nebraskans. So you're going to find a bunch of resources that would be available on the web to find people. So that would be one particular approach you might take, and you can see how we've got databases and then free resources for you to search, and they're all grouped together in one place under biography, genealogy, and people. So that's an example of one search that might take you to browsing in for a question for yourself or your students or your public. Let's go to something a little maybe more day-to-day. Um, -day. Let's say you're looking for a recipe. And Alana and I are always talking about <laughs> recipe websites. So, okay, Alana's already gone right to it. We've got home, food, and garden. Um, and recipes is under the annotation there. So again, you would, you've got the weighted databases that's up on top. Um, there's all kinds of databases, or excuse me, let's go to cooking and food. I'm getting ahead of myself. If we're thinking of recipes, cooking and food, great. Now, 
Look at all those particular recipe websites out there, and I love them. You can search by ingredient, you can search by uh, type of item, you can search all different kinds of ways. Alana and I certainly have our favorites, and when you're looking for something new, the element that the web adds, in many cases, are cust uh, people who've made them and their reviews, and then you can look at them and see how you might want to tweak your recipe. But these are really terrific social resources for sharing for something simple as recipes. And some of these will look really familiar to you. There's the Valentino's pizza crust recipe um, for your vegetarian Thanksgivings. Um, all kinds of sites. There, I mean, this is just a sampling of them and the ones we collected. Now, Alana comes along and tells me that in Wilson Omnifile, and I didn't even realize this, that you can search Wilson Omnifile, which is a full text resource, and you can limit the document type to recipe. So just when you think it's it's more of a research tool, Alana has told me, ah, contraire, there's recipes out there. So we searched just last night artichoke and got like 118 recipes using the good old artichoke. So don't let those databases think that they're not helpful either. So um, in the context of browsing for a recipe, there you go. There's lots of places to go, and and you know that librarians have looked at these tools and have hand-selected them for you. And a third example of browsing, and we'll start back home again, would be, um, let's talk about your magazines and your periodical subscriptions either at home or in the library. So here's magazines, media, and news. And <clears throat> let's click on the electronic magazines and journals because many websites are supportive of their online components. If you subscribe to something, there's very often a web presence as well, often highlighting the most recent issue or the table of contents or something along that line. So here's many, many examples of magazines that are available on the web, in, often in a limited format or a not particular full, mat, full format, but um, here's things that you might subscribe to at home or at your library that are available on the web. Also then to go and scroll back up to the top and look at the databases, you can see again we've waited Wilson Omnifile because that is just an unlimited wealth of full text journals that are available to you in the wonderful format of keyword searching. So you've either got magazines by title or you can search them in the Wilson Omnifile in a full text format and for those of you um, who are able to use eLibrary that's another resource that's going to pick up full text magazines and newspapers again that's why those two are the first two listed so in these economic times if you're having to drop journals from your personal or your library collection you may want to think about this as a way to check what you could drop what you would uh, what you could do without because it's already covered for you in this particular resource so there's a third example of how browsing this particular site can lead you to a real wealth of resources does anybody have any questions about how that worked or how we were able to how things were linked or how we got to what we found or something you'd want us to browse claudette we saw you say no you must be able to hear us again. <laughs> okay, anybody have any questions? Okay, we just wanted to keep checking with you. We're just talking to ourselves in a room and love to hear your voices if you want to talk with us. Yes, yeah. you can raise your hand. Use the little icon to raise your hand if you want to just comment or say something. Okay, okay, well thank you. Then we're going to turn it over to uh, Beth, who will show you how the search feature works. Hi. Um, you can probably notice that Lisa has been struggling under a little voice problem lately. She's had a terrible cold. So <laughs> you can clap your hands for her for getting through that, because I thought she did really well. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the same kind of thing, but if you wanted to use a searching approach. So if we just start back at... Uh, <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yay. Every little bit helps. <laughs> she is better. Boy, you should have heard her last time. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so yes, you could start from the opening page. Uh, at the moment, you wouldn't see the search box because as soon as you click on any one of those topics that you see in the middle and scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see the search box. And just FYI, this is searching the web resources uh, that are in the middle. It is not searching the databases that we pay for access for. Just want to make that clear. So let's say that you're in the library and somebody comes in, uh, maybe a kid, uh, uh, maybe an adult, and they're just really interested in volcanoes. So let's try that one first, Alana. We had to work on how to spell volcanoes here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what you're seeing, and again, you're not going to see those uh, database results here. You're seeing results from what uh, Lisa just showed you by browsing. So uh, let's go try out the Geo Sciences link. And sure enough, uh, first off, just mentioning again, now you do see additional resources that are weighted. Uh, so if you were to search Wilson Omnifile, I can't stress enough what a fabulous resource mm -hmm. that is. Um, I had a question uh, earlier, uh, last week I guess it was, uh, somebody needing articles on wind power. And I found three great ones. Uh, if you find something there, there's often a PDF option that you could print it off and it would look just like the article that was in the journal or you could email that. Um, it's just a fabulous resource. And again, for those of you fortunate enough to, that we could afford to get you access to eLibrary, same thing. So um, you could find great stuff on Volcanoes there. And uh, in the websites down below, selected by librarians, um, there's one on, let's try how volcanoes work. Okay. I don't know if we can click on that and actually get into it or not. I just thought this was kind of fun. Um, if you scroll down on this page, you can actually get a little animation of a volcano. Hmm. If you've got quick time. So you could try the dynamics or the flyby. And hopefully it'll work for us here. Or not. Yeah, it's going to take too long. Don't worry about it. But it's just uh, a scientist has put up um, a little. Oh, here we go. Now, please do not ask me what a Plinian eruption is. My <laughs> husband is a geologist, and he would be horrified to know that I don't know what that means. But um, yeah, so you're. Um, they can actually watch a, uh, an animation of how this particular type of eruption works. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's the kind with bombs and blocks of things, so very lethal. So I just thought that was kind of fun. So that's just an example of the type of search you might be wanting to do in your uh, media center or library or let one of your customers use. So if you want to back out of there, let's try another search. Yes, and once you're in one of our secondary or three -tier, third tier pages, that search box is always going to be there in that bottom left corner for you. So let's try movie stars. So, did anybody watch the Academy Awards? Yay, I did, I did. <laughs> Okay. Good for you, Constance. <laughs> yeah. I watched yeah. the whole thing start to finish. <laughs> okay. So we searched on movie stars, and uh, let's try uh, movie and video from Nebraska Access. Is that top link again? And again, you've got your uh, Wilson Omni file, eLibrary, Article First, and ECO as great resources where you could go further to find resources. Or there's just wonderful things here. And I say Lisa is our champion, I think, working on this uh, website on movies the, um, to make sure that there's good stuff there. I just edited it today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. I looked at that one. And they've got some great pictures of, um, you know, them doing the dance from Slumdog Millionaire. And, and so it's really, um, if you want to have a little fun or you just really need to, to look things up, that's a great place to go. Okay. Um, I don't know if we have time for a third search. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something on a little bit more, possibly more serious topic. Let's try property values. 
And it's tax time, uh, at least in Lincoln, it's, it's property tax time. And uh, there was stuff in the paper uh, over the weekend that shows um, parcel IDs that are going to be sold for back taxes. And, and that usually leads a lot of questions. We get a lot of questions relating to property values. And something I wanted to show you here is when you did that search, you see that top link has a little bit of blue shading on it. That's one that, um, yeah, that's one of our lab librarian recommended websites. So if you can think in terms of cataloging, there's metadata has been put into uh, this link to make it come, we're forcing it to the top of the search because we're thinking that's probably most likely what people were really looking for if they typed in property value. So if we went there, um, again, you can, you can, if you're interested in a more scholarly type of uh, search, you could go into Wilson Omnifile and there's, they, it actually indexes a journal called Appraisal Journal. It had some articles for how to do property evaluations if you're an assessor. Uh, that's the type of thing they would read. But the part that, that we use the most here, and we use this all the time, it is one of our most popular Nebraska FAQs, which you... Um, is all these different counties in Nebraska. And if, boy, if you're in a county where you know that your assessor has got a website up, let us know in case we haven't added it yet. But here's all the different counties in Nebraska where you can search things online. And if you were to actually go to, say, Lancaster County, um, and you had read that, uh, seen that big list in the, in the weekend paper, uh, you can actually search on something called a parcel identification number and find out whose property really is about to get sold for back taxes. So um, this is one of our most used um, Nebraska FAQs. And we really did go through 93 counties. If your county is now live and giving this information, don't hesitate to click at the bottom and let us know. Our website's as good as you all contribute to us, sites that you're aware of. So we haven't combed through those 93 counties in about six months. Yeah, I'm guessing this may not be of huge interest to our media specialists, but it's huge, it would probably be a pretty good thing to know about if you're in a public library. Mm -hmm. Any questions about using the search? Okay. Thanks, Claudette, for the no. Just, just remember that that is searching the websites only. To search the databases, you do need to be within the database. I think we really puzzled over how to make that clear to users. So when you wonder why the search is low and probably not as prominent, it's because we didn't want to set up any expectation to our users that they were getting a full search of Wilson and websites. We really are just searching the web within the sites that we've put within our database. So, I, I think yeah. it's nice that it actually says it underneath the yes. search to right. clarify. So it does doing. indicate yeah. what you are searching that you are not searching the database. I hate to overstress that. Yeah. So if you were to actually click on one of the additional resources listed top, you would be doing it the, your usual way of searching. Right, right. With your password. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for your responses. Okay, over here you see some Valentine hearts. We have hot topics. And that was an idea, I think, of Valana's or Shannon's at some point. Why don't we highlight some hot topics? So these really change. They do change every month. And so uh, you can see, I've heard from some librarians they use this for their bulletin boards or displays or pulling out books. So um, some of these never change and are pretty known. But, for example, February Library Lovers Month, and you get your pet dental work Children. taken care of. Right. Everyone's okay. teeth. <laughs> apparently everyone's teeth in February really matter. Fido's and your own. And then we've arranged it by um, other thematic particular things that are going on. There's the crane migration. Um, Tax forms, those are stay, those will stay on the hot topics for the months that they are relevant. And then they're arranged by day. So you know when all your events are. I, I always check with one of our staff members here to see if I've left off a sports event. <laughs> and he always updates me. So those are up to date and on topic. Yeah, so so. You've, you've missed it now, but just remember yesterday was that Tuesday. And back in the recipe search, there was a link to Creole cooking. Mm. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So that, that's just helpful, um, and the arrangement is a pretty easy to read format. Now someone just decided to change that, and all for the better. <laughs> they used to just be listed all in one lump. So those will change on the first day of the month, and I'm hoping that they're helpful to you in whatever format they are by just bringing you up to date on what's going on that month. And again, if there's ever anything we need to add, all you need to do is, uh, I think you can click below and it gets to us. Trust me, it gets to us and we it, are. It's not below, it's above now. It's stuff. above, it's above. Sorry, contact us. 
if there's an event that you know, going on in your town, Wayne has Chicken Festival, and we, we've forgotten it this month. Let us know that we need to add that to the hot topics because it's really relevant to Nebraska mm -hmm. and items of significance to librarians. Right. So um, that's what's going to be there. I'm hoping it's helpful to you all. Okay, well, while we're up there, um, let's go take a look at the Ask a Librarian link that's at the top. And I realize we're kind of limited here because you, we can't show you the whole screen uh, all at once. But over to the top right is the Ask a Librarian link. So some of you uh, have, have enjoyed chatting with us. This is the same. This just gives you all the different ways that you can ask the question. And I'll start off with a little disclaimer since the, the three people that are going to get your questions this way are uh, Lisa and Julie and myself. And if your question is about uh, a more technical issue, like searching one of the databases and you're having some problems, Elena's going to show you in a minute a better place to ask that sort of question. And that's not to say you can't use this, but just that we may end up just uh, rounding up somebody who can better help you uh, with one of those more technical questions. So let's try chatting with uh, Julie. She's at the reference desk right now. So. Alana's just going to type in something, and I did warn her, but uh, our chat is up. Uh, we are open, you probably know this, 8 to 5 on weekdays. So if you were to come in here uh, during the evening or on the weekend, hey, there she is, having fun. Um, just tell her we're... While Alana's typing, I think it's good to see, look how you're logged in there, Mebo Guest. Maybe you want to ask a question confidentially, and you don't want to identify who you are, who you are and you think, oh, I can't ask that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, and you can see that when Julie answered, uh, she said hi, but we, we knew that it was Julie there. But what the three of us usually do is once someone uh, starts the chat with us, we will answer back by saying, hi, this is Beth, this is Lisa, this is Julie. So that we put a name on ourselves, but we never expect anybody else to volunteer who they are. And if, but if you're trying to, if you come to this Ask a Librarian page during the evening or on the weekend, you probably won't even see the chat box, but there are some other things you can do that 24-7. Uh, and one of them is, is that you can email us. And there is now two different places, links there, where it just links to an online form. And... I'm sure a lot of you have, have done this before. Here's a, an opportunity to put your question here. And if it's in the evening uh, or the weekend, we won't see this until we're back at work. But we do, once we see your question, our pledge is to respond back within 24 hours. And most of the time, it's, it's way less than that. It's probably within an hour. You can use that for lots of things, asking questions. Uh, some people use it for interlibrary loan requests rather than using the interlibrary loan form. But just uh, you can do it 24-7. You just might not hear back from us until we're actually there. And if you'd like to just pick up the phone, you can always call us. So there's our 800 number there. And uh, the direct line that 471-4016 is the direct line uh, right to the reference desk. So if you do call the 800 number, it helps them if you just ask for the reference desk. And uh, of course, where we are when we're open. And something uh, that you may have heard that we're doing now is we have a Twitter account. So we are tweeting our reference questions. I love that, tweeting. <laughs> so, <laughs> these are, and it's actually the most recent ones. So that one at the top is probably one that was put in this morning. Julie just answered um, that. Yeah, who do I call to report an illegal immigrant? Uh, I know the OSHA one is from yesterday. Those top two are, are from uh, questions that we've had today. Uh, and if you click on that Twitter link that's right there, you could actually, if you really wanted to, see all of the different, I'm not sure, we were well over a thousand questions now. Mm -hmm. And just go over the right and see how many other people see them. Yeah, there you go, 1521. Yeah, so since we started doing this, and I forgot now exactly when we started about two years now. using Twitter, um, some people are a little frustrated that we don't post the answers. And, <laughs> and uh, Lisa talked... I like the answers. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa okay, talked yes. about anonymity with chatting. Well, of course, uh, we're librarians. We know very well that, that you don't reveal the identity of your patron. So you might find a question you asked in here sometime, but you will never see it uh, identified with who you are. 
go. That's how you can ask a librarian. The other um, option Beth had mentioned was if we get more technical questions, um, there is a contact option available. And you can see here, we just kind of uh, summarize the different ways you can contact us. Um, we do point folks to the Ask a Librarian page if they, you know, for some reason didn't click on that. And they have a reference question that can be easily and quickly answered. Um, again, you'll see next to below that, that we do point residents, again, back to the local libraries. Um, we do always, of course, encourage your patrons to go out and actually talk to the librarians and stuff because um, a lot of times you can help them in ways that we can't. And below that then we have assistance for librarians and you can see myself, Alana listed here and of course um, Susan Nicely, which I'm sure a lot of you also know from the road shows. Um, if you have those more technical questions, your IP addresses aren't working, you lost your password, um, you can't get into this database. You all know those type of questions, I'm sure. Um, feel free to either call or email myself or Susan. Um, our email, our, our names here are links that will take you out to a little form that will just send us an email. So please contact us any way that works best for you. And then when I'm on this page, um, I also want to make sure I pointed out the librarian's toolbox. Um, for all of you that have come to the road shows in the past, you know I've talked about this for uh, many, many years. Uh, this is where we have all the resources for librarians. And this, this URL is actually going to stay the same. You can see it's still hosted out on the Nebraska Library Commission's website. Um, that kind of goes back to our separation before when Lisa talked about um, keeping all this stuff here for librarians on the commission site because we know your patrons don't care about this information. And you'll see right now we're still in that transitional period. Um, we have started to get a lot of stuff converted over to the new Nebraska Access, but um, it is going to take us time to get everything done. Uh, the help information is just going to link you back to the Nebraska Access website. Uh, we do have a document up called Linking to Nebraska Access. So if you are trying to upgrade those, update those links on your website, we do tell you how you can go about doing it. And I have put some more logos out there. I know in the past, a lot of you have used some of the Nebraska Access logos to put up on your website to create links. Um, that's great. Um, if these size of images don't work for you, just let me know and I can help you come up with an image that's probably the right size that'll work for you. And you can see here we are just leaving the old information up for now because we know people may still be using this all the way um, <coughs> through the end of June. Um, below that we do have a press release so uh, this is one if you would like to um, put it in your local paper, um, you can just uh, customize this. We do have places here for you to insert your information, or if you'd rather just, um, you know, take parts of this and work with it, that's fine too. And um, as I said, we're still having the old and new up, so here we still have all of the old information up. Uh, we haven't taken any of this down yet. Uh, I know one thing, since I was mentioning um, the password changes, I know a lot of you use the custom the little business cards where you can put the password out and give it out to your patrons. I have not got those converted yet, but I will have those done in the new version ready um, before I send out the new password. So um, my to-do list is kind of long, as you can imagine. <laughs> We keep hoping she doesn't get whatever Lisa has. <laughs> she won't. She won't. Um, the other thing, um, 
I've had, I was just kind of wanted to mention, I know I mentioned the road show, and uh, people have been asking about, you know, are we going to do training and stuff on the new Nebraska Access? And Susan and I are planning to go out and do the road shows like we have for the past 10 years, 11 years, 9 years. I don't know. Again, it's too long for me to remember. <laughs> anyway, Susan and I will be will be hitting the road again this year. Uh, we don't have anything scheduled yet, but um, during those road shows, we we'll, of course will be talking about the new Nebraska Access and um, making sure everybody's familiar with it, doing training on it, um, and in addition to what the database will be talking about. So um, keep that in mind if you are you want more training. Um, we haven't talked about dates or times or locations or anything like that, but uh, Susan did agree that yes, we are going to go out and do the road show. So that's what I can tell you for now. I think that covers the a lot of the topics we wanted to cover. Okay, we, we've got a few minutes left, and now is when we'd like to ask you for your feedback, your reactions to this uh, website. And don't be shy about telling us things that you'd like to see changed, that you're having difficulty with. This is an evolving website. Uh, this, a lot of work went into this, but we have no... Uh, we don't intend that it's going to remain static, and we'll actually be coming together, the web team, in the next couple weeks or so uh, to talk about comments that we've gotten. And we're saving all the comments that we get from people and suggestions for ways to improve it. And we will be looking at those. And there, so you probably will see in the near future a few tweaks being made to the site based on the feedback we've gotten. So um, we're open for business. We'd like to get some of your your reaction right now if you would like to share that. Jean's got a comment. Jean from Ralston. Jean from La Vista. Hi. What, can, what sort of comments do you have? Go ahead. If you're saying something, we didn't hear it. So could you repeat it if you said something? We just missed it. We're having trouble hearing you, Jean. Oh, dear. I'm not sure. Would you be able to type your question, Jean? I'm sorry. Can you go to the text chat? We're just having some voice trouble, just like I am. Are you able to type it for us? Oh, thanks, Jean. I'm sorry. We're just... Yeah, we heard you and then we didn't. Did you have a question or a comment? Jean, you have to hold the control key down the whole time while you're talking. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to try to type it. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for the comments. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Oh, um, Claudette said the site looks really good. Um, Laura Lee Perkins said we really like the new site. It looks easier to navigate. It's very user friendly. Um, Claudette, one of our teachers, is working on her master's degree and needed some full text journal articles. I directed her to Nebraska Access. She found it useful. Okay, and Laura said the new Nebraska Access looks great. I think it will be very helpful. It also looks user friendly. Good. We're so happy to hear that. We really tried and tried to think about the users the whole time. So, okay, so Jean, 17-inch um, monitor cannot see the additional sites on the right-hand side. Oh, dear. Jean, can I talk to you later about that? Because I have a 17-inch at home, and I see them just fine. So, um, okay, thanks, Jean. Okay, yeah, but we appreciate you asking that because we really struggled with that as well. We've had some users say the page is locked. And you do have to scroll down. And in a perfect world, we'd like to be able to fit everything up in one monitor size. But you all have different size monitors. Yeah, there's so much information. And there's a there lot of good stuff. We went to a little white face. So I'm glad that you said that, Jean, because it's certainly something that we talked a lot about here. Do talk with Alana about the resolution so you yeah. can see everything. And Jean, I know you're a, a technical person, and I. We did check it with numerous different browsers too to see how mm -hmm. it worked, and I couldn't name them all, but. Um, I'm sure Alana could. So, yeah. but we really appreciate getting feedback from somebody who maybe can help us with some technical issues that we didn't find out about. Right. 
I like the end of uh, Laura's comment up there too, that sites like this are really helpful for us who live in small towns with limited budgets. Yeah. That's kind of the point of this whole thing. Isn't it? Right. Okay. Do you think of this as part of your library collection and the people who go along with that resource who are ready and willing to help you if you've got a question? That is why we're here. We want to make you look great. And we want the resources to be helpful to both you and to your customers. Any other comments? Constance said, I like the new hot topics. This keeps me informed. I like the new layout. Great. Those hot topics are my baby. So um, I'm really glad you're there. So cool. I get the statistics and sometimes I, I'm not sure that it's useful. So yeah, keep it. Keep, keep how, do you, how do you like the new, the new banner, the logo? Yeah. Alana spent untold hours getting this. We started with a design from the intern, uh, Karen Dalziel, who really got us going. And it, it's, I don't know how many different incarnations Alana went through before we got the buildings in the right place and the color the way we wanted it. Yeah, and you'll notice that it is Omaha to the far right, Lincoln farther. <laughs> and it does really try to go across the state with cranes flying. Any reaction to that orange? And chimney Rock. Yeah, and Chimney Rock. And, and as you'll notice in this graphic, the sun sets in the north. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try to ignore the fact that yeah. it's setting in the north. Right, right. But any any other reactions to the look, the um, pictures, the um, anything? Oh, Laura says, I like the new logo. It covers all of Nebraska. I like the new logo. It covers everything. Thank you. We, we were fishing for compliments, obviously. <laughs> well, if you really hate it, we want to hear that, too. I'm more, more user-friendly, good work. Thank you. We do appreciate it. Thank you. We, we just think it looks more up to date ourselves. It's, but it's like working on a baby and then birthing it. It's hard. <laughs> we want to know what y'all think. There's a good comment from Lorelei. Two oh. months of hot topics. Oh. Ah. Well, okay. Are you thinking two months ahead of time? You mean like February you time and March then, Lorelei? Okay, cool graphics. Or Lee, which two months are you thinking we should include in the hot topics? Next. Would you like February and March? I'm just looking for a yes or no, I guess. So next month. Okay, yeah, okay, March got it. Okay. So you'd have some time to plan ahead if you want to make Okay, we can do an upcoming link. Okay, that's, that's where we're, that's all nodding, we're all nodding our heads in the technical aspects. Okay, thank you. This is exactly the sort of thing we want to hear. Anything else? It just is your, you're welcome, Laurelie, thank you. This site is for you all, and we definitely want it to be helpful and like a comfortable old shoe that you go right to, and it, it's easy to get around, and if you can't find something, then we definitely need to hear about it. Um, okay, anything else? Anything else at all? Alana's going to go back to our faces so you can see us. I think so you can see what we look like. There we are. Okay, with all of our coffee and such <laughs> sitting in front of us. We really appreciate you taking time to come take a look at our new webpage. It's something that's been a long labor for us. Long. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to run and remind you um, again. We just I put up the contact information. So I know I've heard from a lot of you already, but um, here's all information again. Please feel free to um, contact us if you have any problems or questions or uh, if you just want to chat. That's fine too. You know where to find us. So um, thank you very much. I think that's all we wanted to cover. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank thanks. You. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming today. Um, the session has been recorded and will be posted uh, this afternoon sometime. Um, I'll be getting some applause from people. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us this morning. So uh, thanks very much for attending this week's uh, Encompass Live. Uh, next week will be at the top of the computers, what to know before you buy. So thank you. Bye-bye.